Oh. Apparently no worse for wear. Just a, her pride took a hit maybe. Ooh. You gonna stop? <laughs> wow, that was close. <laughs> yeah, Callie's fine. You fools. I can see a radiator a little bit of mouth of Callie. Do you mind? <laughs> Well, good morning guys we're out in the greenhouse i was just checking to see if i had any more germination the weather has kind of cooled down a little bit so if i have to watch it because if it's going to go below freezing i'll have to bring whatever has germinated in the house that way it doesn't get nipped with frost but right now the greenhouse is holding pretty steady uh we filled in some of the gaps earlier this year and it's actually got some sweat on the windows now which is wonderful i think it's low 40s outside right now and we're sitting at 60 in here, so that's that's great. Uh, today, you guys love when I do my rant videos. Uh, so that's what we're gonna do today a little bit. Harley said to tell you guys hi. She went in the house because she said, I don't usually have a lot to add to these videos. So uh, I wanted to just drop in and mention about the Amos Miller case that's here in my state of Pennsylvania. If you guys haven't followed it, He's the Amish farmer out near Lancaster in that area, and he had an organic um, program where people would join a membership, you know, as if you would with Sam's Club or Costco. You know, he had a membership and he would sell people organic, unprocessed, raw, um, you know, farm products, eggs, meats, um, dairy all types of things. I even seen um, on the website he had colostrum, which is actually very healing for people that have uh, gut issues. But I digress, we're not talking about health issues or products right now. Uh, the, the situation was last year, the state police came in, raided his farm, they shut him down, they threatened to throw him into federal prison. And it's been an ongoing process. Again, in January, the state police came again and they raided his farm and they shut him down again. The good news is he fought and he stood for what he believed in and he had a ton of customer support that backed him intensely. He had great lawyers and he was within the statutes of the law. Like he was within his reasons, like he wasn't doing anything wrong. I just heard this morning that he is able to um, access 95% of his business, which is his mail order business. He's allowed to continue to sell to them. So it's looking good for Amos Miller. And I want to say bravo on that note, which leads me to a few other things that are mildly concerning to me as a farmer. And I'm encouraging you guys to really set your line in the sand, really draw your line and know what you're willing to concede and what you're not willing to concede. So I saw that there are, um, in my state again, people are getting their chickens taken away from them because of maybe there's ordinances, uh, maybe there's new ordinances being applied because neighbors are fussing and complaining. Um, I saw that out in, I want to say it's Iowa, a dairy farm and a few others got shut down because they're in a certain area that you're not supposed to have a farm. This is becoming a thing and this is becoming more and more concerning. And I want to just tell you that I think anytime you have a place that doesn't allow you to have chickens, I mean, there are cities that permit you to have a few laying hens. and we're talking about suburbs, we're talking about housing divisions and, and all these things, okay? We're even talking about parts of rural America that are telling you, oh no, no, you're not allowed to have these animals on your property. That needs to be fought. And it's going to depend on us to go in there and say, no, no, we live in the United States of America. And in our freedoms is the freedom to feed ourselves. 
I mean, I think that's a human right that should be universal throughout the entire world. I don't think anybody should tell you that you can't feed yourself. So I think that these things need to be fought. And of course, I understand there needs to be some limitations. You know, if you're living in a, in a town and you want to have a couple chickens, that's great. But you need to make sure they don't go in your neighbor's yard and you need to make sure that they're kept clean and there's no odor. There's work that goes in. And as long as you're willing to put in the work and you're actually listening to the rules and stipulations, then there's absolutely zero reason why somebody should tell you that you cannot raise your own food. I mean, there's so far as to say that there's, um, you know, um, housing plans that don't allow people to grow a vegetable garden. That's, that's crazy. You can have a swimming pool for the public, but you can't have a vegetable garden in your backyard. That's just, that's, that's not in any way, shape or form normal. Okay, we're, we're moving out of the realm of normal and we're heading way into fantasy land where we don't think that people should raise food. I mean, what do you, eventually, I mean, these are big dairy farms too. The one dairy farm in Iowa was known national, like internationally for his cheese. He's won international awards. So we're talking about somebody that makes cheese and ships it everywhere across the world and he's going to get shut down. I just think we are really entering into some scary times. And as a farmer, I'm drawing my line in the sand. If somebody comes here and says, oh, Kira, you know what? I'm so sorry. You're, you're farming on a piece of land that you can't be farming on. Um, we're going to have to ask you to get rid of your animals. I have a finger for them, and it's between the pointer and the ring finger. Okay? That's not going to happen. And I will fight it tooth and nail. I will fight it to the death. That's who I am as a person. Um... I think that more of us need to take a stand. Now, on that note, many farmers, big industrial farmers that we rely on for food, they participate in government-funded programs. Okay, these government programs puts the government right at their doorstep. The government knows absolutely everything they do. And, you know, they're just waving the bait up here like, oh, yeah, do what we tell you. We'll give you money. Don't do what we tell you, and we'll bankrupt you. Take everything that you have. We need to be cautious about how much we allow the government into our property, into our business. Yeah, we have to pay them taxes. That's part of living here. No matter how outrageous some of these taxes are, we have to pay them. Yes, we have to rely on the government for certain things. We live in this country. It's part of it. But I'll give you an example. And this, you just multiply this on a bigger, bigger, bigger scale. Okay. Locally, our government gives grants for high tunnels. Okay. So this sounds great. They're going to give you half of the money up front for your high tunnel. You go and you buy it, you pay the rest of the cost, you build it, and they'll reimburse you for the remaining like half. I think it is half, maybe it's 60% of your high tunnel. That sounds fantastic, right? It's a grant. You don't have to pay it back. However, the government can stop in on your property any time between the time you get it and five years and say, I don't like how you're growing things. We're taking this back. Uh, you have to follow a complete laundry list of things. You have to plant in ground. You can't have raised beds. You have to plant like this. You have to plant these crops only. There's a whole laundry list. So on the outside, this looks great. Oh, wow, I'm going to get half off of my high tunnel and that's going to be everything I need to really get my business going. That sounds great until you start reading the fine print and you realize that they can come in any time and take all of that away from you. That's not good. And we're allowing that to happen on a bigger and a bigger and a bigger scale. And at what point does it just get to the fact that this is a government farm and you're just a mere serf that's taking care of it in a feudalistic system? We're not going back to medieval times here, people. I also think that we have lost grasp of the concept that we're the ones that make the rules, okay? So the government is here to listen to us. How, you know, they don't really listen to us, but local governments have to listen to us because we have a mouth. But we've become so complacent in the fact we're all, oh, the kid has a soccer meet. I can't go to the, the, the county in the meeting tonight, or this is going on and I don't have time to read what happened in the minutes that's posted online because I'm looking at these reels over here on whatever browser you're on, like a TikTok or whatever. I'm not on TikTok. I don't know how it works, but 
you know, people are so engulfed in entertaining themselves that they have lost the concept of participating in your local government and understanding what's happening. We have minutes and like news things that go out monthly. And I make sure I read that stuff because if there's one little thing in there that I don't like, you better believe I'm going to be over there saying, "Uh, excuse me, (laughs) this doesn't fly with me. Okay. We all need to participate more. And this is including if you live in a city and you think this doesn't pertain to me, but it does pertain to you because somebody's growing your food. Somebody somewhere is growing what you're eating. So it does pertain to you and it should be important. And I honestly, I, I feel so strongly that we need to move away from the corporate farms. And I understand and I sympathize because those corporate farms were most likely just small farms at one point that got lucky and they, they figured out the system and they worked really hard and and they made it big, but that shouldn't be the answer. The answer needs to be back on the small farm, the local farm where you know who's growing your food and you know that that person's going to stand up for you. Now, I have one more bit of concerning thing that I want everybody to keep just back here somewhere, okay? There has been some cases floating around on the news of a certain disease that's linked to birds, okay? I'm, I'm speaking very vaguely here because I don't want this to be flagged for anything. This has transferred to goats, cows, and humans. Now, I think I... I very well could be wrong, but I heard the statistic. I didn't research it for myself, so please don't keep me to this. But I heard the statistic that it's only ever affected humans a couple times in the history, okay? This is starting to be blown out of proportion and starting to look like a thing. I also heard that the nation's largest egg-producing company has found this virus in their flock. So you already know that that means egg prices are about to... (laughs) through the roof again. Okay, here we go on this fun little ride. But guess what? If you had a local farmer that you got eggs from, you wouldn't care. If you had your own chickens in your own backyard, you wouldn't care. But this is now being reported to affect beef, dairy, goats, and humans. So I don't know what slippery slope we're heading on here, but one could only imagine if something could go from bats to humans back then, where we're heading here, okay? So my thought is, number one, if you're in my situation, you're real familiar with how to medicate and take care of your own animals. You know what triggers to look for, what things aren't right, and you're gonna be observant to that. But number two, now I'm starting to question, if I had some sort of weird issue that I couldn't handle myself, obviously I'm gonna have to call the vet, but Now I'm going to want to call the vet a lot less because that's going to mean if I, I don't do the blood tests, okay? But if I had something where an animal died and I have the vet out and they do a blood test and this is voluntary and it's one animal and it comes back and it's some kind of freakish thing, they can take all of my animals. What does this mean for the beef industry, the dairy industry? the goat industry, because there's a lot of people that eat goat. Goat is the number one most eaten meat in the entire world. I know it's not common here in the United States, but it is everywhere else. What does this mean for the chicken and egg industry? What does this mean for the prices that you're going to see at the grocery store? We just need to be very mindful of this and keep an eye on it. I'm not saying that it's real. I'm not saying it's not real. I'm not saying where I stand on all of this. I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just giving you some things that you really need to look for because I'm telling you what, we are headed into some really crazy times. And unless we all want to be eating bug burgers, we're going to have to start participating in our local ag because you know what? We're the ones that have the power here. He who has the food has the power. And I'm not willing to concede my food for anybody. I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you enjoy this video. I hope you share it with everybody. I hope it gives you some food for thought. Whether you agree with what I'm saying, whether you don't agree with what I'm saying, these are still points that people are concerned about, I'm concerned about. Uh, My line is drawn. I know where my line is, and I know what I'm willing to do to defend my line in the sand. I think everybody in this country, in the world, needs to draw their land, their line. European farmers, they're They're proven whether their their line is and what they're willing to do to defend it. And we all need to 
start considering because I think there are some trying times ahead. So I hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.